They were the monkeys of the coral sponge world. <laughs> and uh, a viewer wants to know what happens to the recordings, um, these video recordings. And um, hopefully the audio is deleted. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but it isn't. <laughs> no, it's not. Honest. I was joking out there. Um, yeah. The video is archived. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Aaron, can uh, Aaron and video? Can you maybe respond to that one? Um, I just do the saving part. <laughs> 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 I don't know where it goes after we've um, processed it, like saved it all and taken all the audio and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll get a copy, and we're going to share that copy with some others as well. Um, the deep sea coral program. The people who are annotating the dives will get a copy of the video. And I'm not sure uh, what other groups, but it's definitely going to go to an archive and stored. Didn't you also say that someone goes and analyzes all the footage? Yes, there's somebody in Hawaii, and I will probably be dropping off the, the drive for them uh, before I head home to Washington after we get back in the port. That's just this for this cruise. That's not a general OET thing, correct? That's correct. It's just for this cruise. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get support to annotate at least all of these cruises out in the Pacific. Oh, that's awesome. Great. Uh, because it just has to be that way. I mean, there's so much video and so much data on these videos that we just got to keep trying to extract it all. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's a so lot valuable. Of work. It's very valuable. It's tedious, uh, but we've got experts, and they find it kind of fun because they know the animals as well as or better than I do. So it's like I Spy being pay paid to professionally play I Spy. <laughs> <laughs> the archiving and stuff is quite a process. We should have Justin do a, a guest spot on everything he has to do to, yeah. to back up and archive the video and everything. He's the he's the lead man on that. Yeah, and it's it's time consuming is what I gather. I know they put it on tapes as well as hard drives. Yeah. I think the reason for that is uh well one of the many, many reasons that they do that would be that tapes are really good for long term storage. Whereas hard drives can like They can fail pretty easily. They can fail or they can corrupt or whatever and tapes are really good for long term archival storage. So shout out to Justin. Yeah, yeah shout out worker. to him. Shout out to you. Always hustling. Yeah. But rest assured, this video is saved and secured because it's it's just too rare to be able to get down here. It is, it's just too rare. So it is not lost. So we have quite a few questions here from our usual viewers like Jason and Veronica. Thank you for joining us. Um, so another question is, um, can your images be published for identification guides? Excuse me, what was the question? Can your images be published for identification guides? Yeah, it's already on the web. If you were to Google um, Okeanos Animal Guide, version 3 is currently posted that has um, all of the animals that were seen during the three-year Okeanos Explorer Capstone Expedition. And then uh, people are working to incorporate uh, Nautilus dive video. Nautilus, in fact, I have all the images in a merge guide here with me from NA-112, NA-101, mostly Central Pacific, not so much the West Coast yet. Mm. But um, <laughs> so no the next, we have Falcor imagery uh, and more Okeanos, and that'll be version four, hopefully, when they, they can get around to getting that set up. And we had another question earlier, uh, just before we started our watch. Can hurricanes disrupt the flow of the current? That was a question for Emil. I think <laughs> he's the oceanographer. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a it's a good question. It's I don't know how to answer that. I I don't know. I I would assume they would. I don't know at this depth but they're certainly going to disrupt it to a certain depth near the surface. Uh, wind, uh, because the surface is where you get a lot more wind-driven. Uh -huh. um, and that would probably uh, affect the inner waves. Yeah, that's it. Ask that question next time Emil is on watch, which would be 
from 12, 12, to, 12 to 4. four. That's a good yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Donnie, if you can't make it tonight, then on another dive. It's, he's really yeah, good at bike. that stuff. Thanks. Yeah, I know. We got some more. Yeah. Um, so a viewer noticed that um, it's pretty bare. It's very barren down here. Is it naturally like that, or have we noticed any impacts of human activities? No, it's not impacts of human activities. This is what a lot of the seafloor looks like. That's why when we find one of those high density communities that we were diving on yesterday, we get so excited. Um, often they're not. It's not this barren, and that's kind of the reason why we're scooting up slope at a faster rate to see if we can get into a better area. This is the way it is. Some places are really suitable for deep sea animals, and some places are not. Yeah. Okay, and um, Veronica in Kauai is very excited. She's like, I cannot tell you how excited I am about these sightings. I do some teaching with kids about deep sea creatures, and we talk about rat tail fishes, cuskills, and varieties of sea cucumbers. That's exactly what we saw when we started our watch. Yeah, <laughs> those are the coolest part of this dive, I think. Yeah, <laughs> so colorful. Um, and for a change, they waited for our watch. <laughs> yes, right well, we at can, the start. We can give Veronica some more information. I was I was curious as to why a lot of these fishes assume this eel-like shape, and I asked one of the expert ichthyologists and Dr. Bruce Monday and um, uh, that question, and I got an answer. But I'm curious, Veronica, if you had any ideas of of your own before um, I reveal what uh, Dr. Mundy said. Do you know why they a lot of these deep sea fishes uh, take that form with the eel like long form body form? So we'll wait and see what the audience says. Yeah. I was curious. And she's reminding us of our team, Hua Hua Kai. Hui. Hui Hua Kai. Team oh, Sponge. Hui <laughs> Hua Kai. Hui <laughs> Hui. It's slowly. I think I see some animals up slope, unless they're just said pockets. Maybe I'm just hallucinating. Yeah. You're right. There's You're aiming sponges. at something big straight ahead on the Argus view. The polyopagon. Could it be? Yeah. What is it? What is it? It's about to come into view. There it is. Yep, it's Polyopagon. It's not small. No, it is not small at all. There's a few more down oh. slope. I just realized, do you want me to be tr doing this transit with lasers on or off? On, please. Oh, that's huge. So that's 10 centimeters across between those two green points. So that's, geez, 10, 100, 110 right. centimeters. And look at the stalk there on the ground. Probably one of those gigantic long calophagus sponges that died at some point in the past. Mm -hmm. The density is clearly picking up here. Yep. Mm -hmm. We can go up. Yeah, and I see some polyopagon a little further away. Chrysochorchidae. Corals. Uh, that's encouraging. If you change your mind about the hustle, you just let us know. Yeah, I know. It's it's more when, when we decide we want to stop once we've... When you stop, you know there's not going to be another coral for... Miles. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. I don't. Really, I mean, we're able to see them, and annotators will be able to annotate them at the speed. So sure. cool. maybe we'll just keep going until we 
get into something a little richer than this. Got some chrysogorgid corals passing by, and I saw a bamboo uh, a couple moments ago. These fluffy ones are also chrysogorgia, that gold coral. We also had a really nice response from uh, Kenneth Sulak about the impact of hurricanes upon the deeper, well, let's hear it. deeper water currents. So he says the U.S. Naval Lab Naval Research Lab at Stennis Space Center, they had some acoustic Doppler devices moored above the substrate at 500, 1,000, and 1,500 meters depth during the passage of Hurricane Ivan. And he says that bottom currents increased up to five knots during the wow. passage. And they also reversed to the exact opposite of the normal bottom current recorded long term. So they said the results of that recording uh, were published. Wow. Thank yeah. you, Ken. Yeah, thanks. That's what really is interesting. What is that leaf? Um, That's a leaf sponge in the in the genus Tritopleura. Oh, Here's a nice those? little Chrysogorgia rock. Yeah. Oh, that's really pretty. That's a Chrysogorgia. Yeah. Things are definitely um, picking up. We're, we're still not that far from the, I mean, we're not that close to the summit. So this ridge isn't quite as barren. We just maybe started a little too deep. Mm. Yeah, maybe. What are we? We're at. We're at twenty-one fifty-five, but I mean, oh, it maybe okay. a little bit deep given the water current conditions here. I don't know. So we were observing those really high density col uh, colonies at nineteen hundred before, right? On Don Quixote, down to about twenty-one. Yeah, but we've seen really nice colonies or communities, if you will, down to 2,500. It just is very site dependent. Mm. But once you get below 2,500, things peter out just about everywhere, and we don't understand that. Look at this weird looking rock. Yeah, that is yeah. coated with... Uh, Those are barnacles, I think. Barnacles, yeah. We could do a quick zoom on that, please. Sure. Go ahead. Little shrimp or shrimp, yep. Ooh, can I stabilize for a second? Yep, they're barnacles. They're balanoid barnacles. The cool. So okay, the ones that look like little volcanoes. Mm, mm -hmm. As opposed to the gooseneck barnacles that have that little neck. A little stalk. A little stalk, yeah. Um, sorry, I just see Asako Matsumoto had made a comment. She's asking for what time the next dive plan, the H 1892, uh, when it would start. And Asako, I'm afraid I can't answer that right now. Um, we need to get a little further along in this dive before we can um, estimate when we're going to do the other one because we have some options with this one, whether to extend it or to cut it short depending on uh, how productive it is. Another big polyopagon sponge, glass sponge. So Let's do a quick zoom in here, please. Let's check oh. these corals out while I got a uh, ten seconds. Okay. Let's see. Pretty sure that this is in the family Primnoidae. Another I'm one not down sure to the right. What here genus? Too. I think there's a Paragorgia down there too, right there. Yeah. Mm, Bubblegum coral. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, zoom in, please. And there's a dead Faraday sponge below it, the skeleton of a uh, Faraday. For, for how do you say it again? For, for uh, all right, come on. Faraday. I'm going to go. And that's Trevor's favorite coral right there. Oh. That's, I guess that's a bamboo. Bath it's because he's so good at identifying it. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> poke, poke, poke. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everything's a paragorgia. <laughs> it is totally picking up. As soon as we yeah. said we were going to go fast, of course. It yeah. 
Look at these pillow formations. These are, look at these. These are beautiful. Yeah, amazing. They're sort of the classic toothpaste -y, uh pillow lava formations. Those are really spectacular. And a big sea star down there. So Veronica has a has an answer for us about why the organism. Okay, let's hear it. So she says, I have read that these animals tend to be more long eel-like forms because it allows them to utilize a longer lateral line to <laughs> sense their nice. environment. Uh, wow. You thought you were going to get her stumper. No, but no I, I didn't no, know. No, she plus, knew. Uh, plus uh -huh. yep. the type of swimming they can do in that form utilizes less energy. Wow. So that Nailed maximizes the their ability to utilize the decreased food options in the deep sea. Wow, they got, got exactly the answer I got back from Dr. Mundy, yeah. So they have uh, the long form, gives them a longer lateral line. And the lateral line is kind of this uh, electro-sensing uh, apparatus on fish that allows them to detect movement in the water around them, which would be of benefit to an animal uh, working in dark, deep, dark environment to have a better detection mechanism for their prey. And then also that long form is very efficient, and so they consume less energy. Great job, Veronica. You get an A+. Plus. Yeah, she gets a heart here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you look in the animal guide, almost, almost all the fishes down here are, have that form. Except for the ones that just sit on the bottom. Seems like the ambush feeders that... Uh, that sit on the bottom often take like a, just a general round softball shape form, quite a few of them. But so they have a different mechanism for how to how they feed. They don't actually cruise around and hunt for stuff. They just sit and wait for things to come to them, They're like the angler fishes. I want to see what that rock is in Argus sonar. Some kind of feature. Well, it's this thing, I think. So, Aaron, is there some way I can get the high pack feed back on the screen here? I still am shaky on these buttons. Is it? Oh, other Aaron, sorry. E either one. <laughs> high pack plan or high pack survey? I think it's the high pack survey, is what you said before. So survey is the one you want, though, for sure. Okay, survey. And it, then I toggle yeah, up. You got it. Oh no, there it is. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you. Just so you viewers know, it, this is not an old guy thing. I got a gazillion buttons in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> there is no shortage of buttons here. That's just as long as none of them are the big red candy button, we're all okay. That's on my the gooey, one I have. <laughs> on my gooey, I have a button called the button button. <laughs> <laughs> the button is labeled button. That was a black coral. A little, here's a bamboo coming up right here to the left. Good looking coral. And there's some black corals there, the bathopathies or alternatopathies, I'm not sure. I think one of these was collected last watch before, while I was getting ready to come up. Yeah, one little rock has like five species of coral on it. That's pretty cool. So Ooh. how have you felt with this uh, 1200 kilohertz TVL overall, compared to the old one? Or I say old one, the other one. I don't, I don't know, it seems all right. I mean, I, what would be the big difference? We don't get the bottom as quickly. Yeah, and I'm, I feel like we're losing okay. beams more often Christmas. with this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I like guess so. It's the wandering, I don't know. Nice. <laughs> it could be alignment too, but. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't think the wandering is that big of a deal, Thanks. but I'm still in the track link mindset, dial. so right. Okay. <laughs> so it's hard, yeah. hard to know what's bad. I it turns yeah. it it's good off. to know our spare equipment works really well. 
Yeah, we had it serviced, put on a shelf for five years. I don't know, I never used it. So it's good to test it, make sure our stuff is ready to go. Um, USBL does do new tracking well, though, if you want me to reset. Do you want to reset? Sure. Sure, let's do it. So I still don't see a reason to sort of sit down and slow down. I'm seeing little patches, and then they disappear. And Roger. A few more come up. So I still like to see a more steady increase in abundance. Big polyopagon on the right. Beautiful pillows again. Look at nice this. Nice big fan coming up on the top here. Oh, yeah, that's right. In Spoiler the Argus alert. view. A fan or a, or a um, sponge? Heart. Oh, it's a fan. You're right. Thank you. Beautiful big nice. bamboo. And uh, some chrysogorgids. There's a coralid there on the rock. <coughs> a couple of them, those red ones. You know, the way you can spot Paragorgia from Coraleids um, from a distance is the Paragorgia really look deep, deep ruby red. They're redder mm. than most uh, Coralids, at least here. Um, there's an interesting sponge. Yeah. 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 This one. is um, Feria oca erecta because there's a bushy form and then there's sort of a, a taller form. And so that's the, the way they sort of define the sort of subspecies at the moment. Getting steeper, I think. This is my imagination. We have another question from Steve in Big Bear City. With so little life that deep and that size of that fish, uh, what do they eat? I guess the Rod tail fish, those That's bigger a really fish. Good question. Yeah, what do they eat? Now? Well, I'll take a stab, but I might pass that over to Ken, who's on the chat. The question is, what does that Coryphenoides um, eat? I think it's a, a predator. Wow, look at these bamboos. Mm. Um, it's a predator that maybe eats other small fish and crustaceans, perhaps. That would be my guess. Maybe he knows. Um, so Ken was talking about the name polyopagon. It's Greek meaning gray and beard. Um, but the beard, Ken, is the way it grabs onto the rock. They can have very fibrous attachments, and maybe that's what's that's what the Latin or the Greek name is referring to. Want a little uh, local maximum here? Yeah, I wonder if we could do a just a little snap zoom on some of this stuff. Sure. Uh, go ahead and zoom on whatever you think that looks yeah, good. These bamboos would be good. That is a internodal brancher, I think. The precious coral behind there, the small one. Is that what I'm looking at? Uh, where? This one. Where right, is it? Right in the center. Oh no, that's a Chrysogorgia. That's a. Okay. Oh. That one actually is Chrysogorgia crises. It's planar. That is, that's a rock pen that we just went over. Militaris, Chrysogorgia, uh, Bathopathies, bamboo. Oh, there's an Ooh. Umbalula, that flower shaped one. That's a black coral as well. We're getting closer to. A nicer community. And then they all disappear, <laughs> except for a few <laughs> polyopagon. Well, we have another question. OK. Uh, this is from Carlo from Brazil. He studies biology there. And uh, 
works with spider cyto cytogenetics. He loves Nautilus life. His question is, do you know of any study that comments on the possibility of a cryptic diversity given the similarity between these individuals among populations? Just read this a bit to make sure I understand what she's acting. I think I understand what she's asking. Um, well, there, there's been individual studies on specific um, deep water animals that I think she's getting at. And I'll give an, a fish example. There's a fish called a flame snapper, Edelis carbunculus. And we thought this was pan Pacific everywhere, one single species. And then through genetic analysis, they found there's actually two of them. One of them only in Hawaii. Both species are in American Samoa and further west, I think. And then I th think if I remember right, when you go into the Indian Ocean, the larger of the species is there. So um, I guess you could call that cryptic because we all thought they were just one species for quite a while until there was a genetic analysis on them to prove they're different. What they does were cryptic mean? Cryptic means sort of hidden, like they look the same, but they actually aren't. I, I, that's oh, my interpretation of her question. Like if you look at all these polyopagon sponges, you may think they all are the same, although they're, they've got some morphological changes to them. But it's possible that they're two, three, four different species that we're just not I, differentiating. Cryptic can also mean like some of the organisms that hide in the crevices of the rocks that aren't easily observed. Yeah. Um, so I suspect that's a that's a good question. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. I I don't I'm not sure I gave you a very good answer, but we got an answer from Ken on the predation. Um, he says it's an opportunistic predator scavenger. Uh, it actively pursues nectonic prey like fishes, squid, shrimps, and it also homes in on baited camera deployments. So <laughs> that's where its scavenger abilities come in. They say they may. He says that the, that Corypheniotes armatus, one of the species in that genus, uh, they can converge on a carcass for a long time. So Neat. thank you, Ken. I hope that answers the viewer's question. Thank you. Totally different substrate here. Got the total like flat slab almost. A lot more sediment. Yeah. Dry. Oh, anemone down there. Very dry. <laughs> like a, what, a French Chardonnay or something. <laughs> Are they dry? I don't know. <coughs> stupid, stupid joke. <laughs> okay, back to what we're seeing. Oh, is that a, what is, is that? Uh, I think that's a bamboo whip, it looks like. Oh, it's looking at something else. But. Oh. It's a little stock sponge there. Yeah, oh yeah, I could. We could do a quick zoom on this dock sponge. Sure. Uh, it's Calophagus. <laughs> I think the subgenus is Calodiscus, so this would be Calophagus Calodiscus, if I'm Sorry. not mistaken. Well, I'm thank move. you. That's good. It's in the family Rosellidae. Some of these sponges are stocked, as many people have noticed already on this cruise, and some of them are not. And here comes one that's not. The uh, polyopagon are, are generally not. But sometimes they have the lower part of their bodies kind of forming a pedestal. Mm. Whereas it's not quite the same thing as these guys, which actually have a stalk. Now, have you ever seen a sponge with those grappling feet, whatever, uh, that go onto two rocks? You know, they outgrow their first rock. Um, I've seen them grapple sort of cobbles, larger size cobbles, so they're graveling more than one rock. It's yeah, just depend okay. on, yeah. Cool. I don't know if, even so, I think they still could be blown over because those cobbles are loose. Right. Kind of weird texture to the rocks here.
Could we take a look at this coral? Just yep. if you could step zoom this. Still try. I think I have a better handle on what. Uh, okay, zoom in, please. We're looking at this guy. Or? Yeah, this guy. That's it. Do the drive by. Let's see. Yeah. See some nodes. Yeah, I don't think this is one he was particularly interested in. All right, come wide, please. Images. Thank you. Not sure. The polyps are pretty long. They are pretty long. That might be something different, that little vase sponge down on the seafloor. We're about to go over it. If it's yeah, Roger. Yeah, sorry. It's Moving okay. along. All right, it's fine. Did look kind of funky, didn't it? Yeah, it was a different type of sponge, but that's okay. And we have a question for the ROV pilots. Okay. How far laterally from the ship can Argus move? <laughs> I like that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, when we're sitting still, not very far. It's completely dependent on water current. Right now, how far are we behind the ship? 50 some meters. 50 meters off the bow, so that's probably. Oh, yeah, so like 100 meters. 100 meters <laughs> Good off where point. we're supposed to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen I've seen Argus laid back probably 250 meters behind where it's supposed Excuse to be. Excuse me, can yeah, we zoom, zoom in on the this sponge yeah. real quick? Oh yeah, that looks similar to the. Stand by. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Don't do it. This Always. may be another oh, one of these things. Okay, zoom in, please. It looks similar. It's a nice looking one. Ooh, that's yeah. a beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's very crisp too. That video. All right, so. Oh. We haven't seen one like that. Yeah, I need to go outside and pull this out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, this is probably in the family Eurydidae. It's a hard sponge. Right, come wide, please. Yeah, thank you very much. It could be something that's called Perifragella. Um, don't know that we've only seen a few of those members of that genus so far. I'll get a picture for Kainalu here. So Argus wants to be close to the ship, so that's when we say Argus needs to settle out. When we stop the ship, that's what we mean. Uh, it takes a while then for it to come back under the ship, hanging off the stern where, where it wants to be. Floating ghost sponge. Mm -hmm. Kainalo, let's just stick to the family Eurydidae, which is the first word here. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Bridge nav, another one zero zero meter move, same bearing, same speed. It's a long bamboo. Yeah.
to a good handover spot here. It's quite a bit of yeah. rain snow down here. I mean, we don't have an option. Yeah. So again, areas like this, it's harder for things to attach to the surface when it's covered in some kind of sediment like this. Yeah, and usually corals don't like areas that are sedimented because that it hinders their filtering ability if mm -hmm. some of this kicks up. Mm -hmm. Get plugged up. Change yeah. in texture sheet there. Flow, yeah. yeah, sheet flow or something. Um. So Trevor, were you just gonna float when you do the handoff, or were you gonna sit down? No, we're gonna keep keep moving. <laughs> oh, okay. No rest for the wicked. <laughs> okay. It's gonna be a Dan specialty handoff. He'll love it. Yeah, he he'll loves be his in his element. <laughs> it's like the faster, the better. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it in stick lock, 100% forward. Doesn't even know you're talking about him, and he's walking right in. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Bye. Hi. You ready? Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to have a little bit of a dinner time switch out for a few minutes. So those of us on this watch are going to go down and grab a bite, and we're going to have some um, some help up here smells very good for a little too. while while we grab our dinner, and then we'll be back up. Whatever they're cooking smells delicious. What's that? Whatever they're cooking sound smells delicious. Oh, okay. So you haven't eaten yet? No, I come get Aphrodita first, and then I'll go eat oh, when she comes back. That's very nice of you. Everyone on this watch uh, who comes to get you guys does that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, we'll certainly try to do this as quickly as possible to make sure you have plenty of... Or at five oh. turtle speed. It's all good. It's what the hour is for. Half for you, half for us. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we're hustling. 332, 0.5 knots, 100 meter steps, keeping them coming. It's a true handover, no autos. I have to figure <laughs> out where I'm going, how high I'm going. Aaron, we were all loving that map you put together with the dives on it, oh. showing uh, the sea mounts. And Emily, you just muted yourself in case you. We were all we we looked at the uh, 3D map that you were working on when we were in the blue water, and we were loving it. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, a nice map, Barrett. Sort of a squashed, yeah. Um, yeah, squash face fun. That's kind of a little more typical of the G. Twenty percent refrigellas. Thrusters to do half a knot. Yeah. Eric will actually do one point eight, one point nine. It's been patchy. I'm all I'm all sitting now in Randy's seat. So it's just when you think, okay, maybe this is where we should sit down for a while. Are we and uh, just stopping and zooming, or are we just zooming? Uh, we're just doing occasional zooms, Dan. Roger, you see something you want? Shout out. Okay. Can you uh, put the ROV nav screen on 20 meter squares for me? Yeah, I don't need to see the ship. Just it helps me uh, 
judge the distance from Argus. One box. These corals down here in the family Primnoidae, they're pretty common down at these depths. These are probably something in the genus Norella. But those of you who are just joining us, we made a decision to pull off the bottom a little bit and go a little faster so we could make the summit. Um, I can't hear SPL back, back there. Trevor turns it down because he's got the super whammy headset there. Oh. Yeah. Just sort of saying that uh, we made a decision earlier, to, as, and you were part of that discussion, Dan, uh, to actually go uh, a little bit faster up the slope, not stopping for close-ups or collections till we got further up slope to make sure we could make the summit at this particular seamount. Roger. That was a, I uh, wanted to see how the uh, dust there, which way it went, so I could tell how the current was doing. In theory, that shouldn't have happened because uh, Z max velocity is cranked up to 0.3. Is the summit here different than at the other seamounts? Is that why you want to? Uh, yeah, this is a conical summit. So this has never been at the surface and has, it hasn't been subjected to typical subaerial erosion or reef growth oh. and um, so uh, it was pretty dry is the way we described <laughs> the community down below and so we figured we had nothing to lose uh, maybe going a little faster for a while until yeah. things picked up some sponges off to the right there yeah so it's been uh, patchy like that yep three and then you think okay it. now we're getting into something and you go uh, 20 30 meters or so and they're gone they're still pretty, even if it's just a few. Yeah, these are the big polyopagon. No problem identifying them this far off the substrate. There's a big uh, coral colony coming up behind, behind them uh, in the distance. There's small bushy chrysogorgids as well on the left. So we're seeing some of the typical characters that we usually see. This is a really nice big bamboo tree. This could be something like uh, Jason Isis or, or something mm -hmm. like that that form these really big fans. And that colony right there is probably hundreds of years old, I would guess. And there's a Coraliate or Precious Coral right next to it, so that's kind of a nice shot. Some, Some black corals. Several. Yeah. You look down with Argus a bit there. I'll probably have to be all over the tilt if I stop to smell flowers. To probably a paragorgia there, two of them. They just have a deeper red color than the coraleids or the precious corals. Paragorgias are not precious. You think, why? They have better color. Well, they're kind of rubbery. They don't have a really firm skeleton like the coral leaves, and that's why they were never harvested. And nobody harvests them down this deep anyway. Hmm. Well, that's pretty. Yeah, that's a feather star sitting on a dead sponge or, or a coral. Alatera is Chrysogorgia, black. Interesting little shelf there with some coral sitting on top of it. Yeah, that looks pretty like cool, another, Bathy. Another big bamboo. Another big bamboo. French nav, another one zero zero meter step, same speed, same bearing. That's an anemone, probably in the family Actinostolidae, that beautiful red big anemone. 
I might have better current flow over this area with this hump sticking out. Yeah. Just chuckling on some of the notes that they put on the high pack hustle here. <laughs> That's, That's kind of cool to put little reminder notes on the actual mapping software display. <laughs> well, it's not paper and it's not a post-it or anything. It's literally a digital note. Digital reminder. Of digital the reminder, yeah. And more bamboo on the right with little chrysogorgid underneath it. You can still identify at least a family at this height. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff if you know, if you're familiar with these animals. There's some more paragorgia again, just by how red the color is and just how the size and shape of the colonies. Does anyone know if we have an optical transmissometer on Hercules? Question. For Sorry, I didn't hear that. Optical transmissometer. I don't think we measure turbidity. No. We don't have one on Herc or Argus. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Ken. I was There's watching really the video and I forgot to chat. The to check it. Transmissometer from O and C crews. Yeah, Steve Mahaley borrowed one, and they didn't uh, one for the seabird. Yeah, and um, they were kind of reluctant to let him borrow it. And he said, "Oh, we're going to strap it to the vehicle. There's no. They would have to lose the vehicle for us to lose it." <laughs> he said that, yeah. and then he had to call them and say, "Uh, we lost the vehicle." <laughs> <laughs> So it sat on the seabed for a while. <laughs> totally jinxed us. <laughs> yeah, totally. The whole thing. Yeah, you'll have to ask him that if you... There's a fish in Argus, and he just took off. He was way up in the water column. And there is a lazy bamboo. <laughs> That's a position I like to assume a fair amount of the time. <laughs> Laying on its side. That's interesting. There's a, a little stock sponge, which is, as we get closer to it, Is that one of those branching bamboos that was of interest? Uh, I was looking at the sponge. This is okay. That sponge is Bolasoma. That's the name for it. It's a stock sponge in a family that's called Euplectelidae. Um Yeah, I didn't see the sparse one that Scott. Uh, we imaged one of them just a few minutes ago, and I just I'm just so uncertain. Now that is a very yeah. large bamboo. Dense, Huge. very dense. Yeah, wonder if we could do a snap zoom on this, Dan. Yeah. Sure. Massive. Wow, it's awesome. Can we closer? Yeah, there we go. I can zoom all the way in if you want. So uh, pull up zoom. Yeah, so what I'm looking at is how white the stalks of the polyps are, how dense. Some of these bamboos have very clear, transparent stalks, and this is very white and dense, and that's a result of having a lot of these sort of inclusions, I guess, or skeletal parts called sclerites that are filling up that stalk, and that's a characteristic, if I'm not mistaken, of the genus Jason Isis or the J-clade bamboos. Thank you. That was very Why is that one section white? 
that when one you little had your hand on the winch. piece of the sock, it was like almost a white shade when the rest was a pinkish color. Mm. Okay. Does that mean anything? No, it's, yeah, and it could have been a part which was lacking some polyps or may have mm. been partially eaten or something, then they would expose the skeleton would be the one. Single digits there. So that's two, that's dead. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. I'm going to get relieved to go grab a little bite to eat, and I'll be back up, and you're going to be listening to Dr. Beth Orcutt for a few minutes. Looks like it uh, flattens out here a bit. I'll be able to go a little slower here because we're <coughs> not going up so steep. I often wish you had a left-handed mouse over there with Argus on. Track bolt. I can uh, tell if you got. The winch used to be a left-handed winch. What happened? It still could be. It's like another big bamboo. No. A lot prettier if you turn off auto heading. Seen I don't know, I'm not sure. General more coral up here. Mm. Oh, what do we got out there? To the left. Some big stuff. <laughs> that might be branching bamboo with some crinoids on a dead sponge. It's a bit more up here, though. Yeah. More and bigger. Veering off the path for the flowers here. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, you can uh, change heading a bit, follow, chase me around. I'll follow the top of the ridge here for a while. See where it comes up super steep there, and then more uh, fauna here. But yeah. That's pretty. I missed the big one there. In the That's quite pretty. Cool topography. Yeah, let's uh, hey Nav, let's drop a target here. Just uh, diverse corals. Roger. And if we could get a still of the Argus cam, that would be awesome. Yeah. Good call. Big sponge. Several big sponges sticking out of the side. Wow. That's a interesting cliff face. Loaded. Mm -hmm. Trying to get a sense of which way we think the current is going here. Got a coming at us from the northeast. Herx facing coming around to face west. So the current's flowing into that rock right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome.
Really cool sponges there. Yeah, it looks like a trumpet almost. Yeah. Some ripples. Oh, yeah. Big coral. You want a better shot of the ripples there? Yes, please. Where's Andrea? Is that a yes? Yeah, let's do yes. that. Yeah. And maybe we could uh, get a shot of that big coral at the same time. Oh, that's a nice shot. That's yeah, a really nice shot. It's an old timer. <laughs> and so the current's clearly rushing up that face and then just dumping its sediment once it gets over the top. Mm -hmm. uh, or just, dis yeah, disturbing it at least. Little Coral back. seems to have found a good place, though, to catch food. Okay, I seem to be facing the wrong way here. It's supposed to be gone. Roger. Okay, video swapping out. It's a nice sponge there. Yeah. Weird location. I come under you here. I'll try and come off the side a little bit. But. A lot more stuff in the water column up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that very clearly too in Argus's cam. Water clarity has gone down significantly. Something big off to the right. Yeah, another, oh, yeah. another big nice. coral with either a piece that died or some predation. A big hole? a little hole in the middle, yeah. Nice yellow-colored stocked sponge there, too. I haven't seen very many yellow ones. I've mm -mm. mostly seen white ones. Bridge, another one zero zero meter move, same bearing, same speed. That's awesome. That's a good shot. Another crinoid on top of a dead sponge. <coughs> it's a sweet little Dr. Seuss rock. <laughs> a little bit of manganese nodule action down there in the in the valley of that boulders. 